Okay, we're here at the Heinz Convention Center in Back Bay. We're at the Boston International Antiquarian Book Fair 2019, and we're sitting down with the one and only Philip J. Paragis. Phil, how are you doing today? Oh, uh, I, I can't wait. The fun never stops. <laughs> the fun never stops. That's what everyone says. That's what everyone says. Another. Uh, that's a great saying to put on a mug. From the butt up. From the butt down. Uh, it's really sore, but oh, that's it? okay. Oh, you no. know. How are your legs? <coughs> Not too good. Not too good. Oh my goodness. But I'm seated. I'm seated, so it's okay. okay. All well, right. thanks for taking the time to tell sure. your incredible story. Um, uh, How did you know it was incredible? I'm going to just guess. I'm presupposing that it is okay. incredible. All right. um, I love everyone's story. I think they're all incredible. But so we uh, like to go back to the beginning and uh -huh. take a little, little time travel back to talk about where you were raised, your, your background, a little bit of your personal history. And what, what, you know, then we'll lead to what got you to this place. I grew business. up in Iowa, lots of pigs and soybeans. Okay. Um, okay. Went to the University of Northern Iowa. Mm -hmm. um, was a college newspaper editor, which is important later on. Okay. Um, ended up at the University of Michigan and got a PhD. I was Dr. Phil before the ball yeah, guy. Yeah. And what was that PhD in? English literature. Oh, that's fitting. That is fitting. There is the foreshadowing starting yeah. to come into the room. Yeah. Okay. That's good. And after that PhD, what, what Well, what here's, wh here's where the story starts. Okay. And, you know, I think, frankly, that in most cases, booksellers' books are more interesting than the booksellers. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the case with me. Oh. But how I got started is, is kind of interesting. Because I was doing a dissertation on restoration comedy. Mm -hmm. um, plays that were produced in London in the 1660s mm -hmm. after the king was restored. Mm -hmm. um, actresses were on the stage for the first time. It was great, mm -hmm. um, very salacious kind of time, mm -hmm. fun to write about. And I um, got a job teaching uh, in Kalamazoo mm -hmm. at Western Michigan University. You can afford to buy a house in Kalamazoo. You can't afford to buy a house in Ann Arbor. Mm -hmm. So I bought a house, mm -hmm. but it was empty. So I needed furniture. So I started going to garage sales. Mm -hmm. One day, in a small community, in a little rundown house, in a bedroom, in a corner, on a table, there was a big stack of books. Mm. And all of the books but one were old ratty Bibles. Okay. But one of them was a, an architectural book that was printed in 1669 mm -hmm. in London. Mm -hmm. It had nothing to do with anything else in that house. And it was clear that fate had stepped in my path, mm -hmm. okay? And I looked at it, and the woman wanted $45. This is 1977, okay? okay? Yeah. Now, my friend Crazy Amel, mm -hmm. who was in the graduate program with me at Michigan, uh, uh, was with me, and I said, this would be fun to have, because I had thought about books up till that point as repositories of information, yeah. never as cultural artifacts. Mm -hmm. And here was, for the first time, an object that was a cultural artifact. It was something from the period where I was doing my dissertation. Mm -hmm. So I thought, wow, it would be fun to have something like that. Mm -hmm. So I said, Emil, you want to go in 50-50? It might be worth some money. You yeah. never know. He said he didn't want to touch it. Okay. okay? <laughs> so <coughs> we dickered. I bought it for $35. Okay. Now, I had less than no money. Yeah. I was deeply in debt for the University of Michigan. And it was really just a kind of a, a risk. But it was fun. Mm -hmm. and. From that point on, I was hooked because I started asking questions mm. and people were kind enough to answer them. Mm -hmm. You know, like, is this book worth money? Mm -hmm. And it turned out that this book, which was um, a, a book about building columns, you know, Corinthian um, ionic co uh, yeah. columns, and it was, it was um, met f meant for the use of carpenters on job sites. And so it was a book that got beat all to hell. Mm -hmm. And so there were very few copies available. And in fact, only one copy had been sold in the 20th century at auction. Okay. And of course, I didn't know anything about auction mm -hmm. records when I bought yeah. the book, but people told me about such things. And the thing, that other copy sold for $1,000. I thought, oh my God, oh. Uh, this is exciting. Mm -hmm. um, and so it, it was a little ratty, but it was all there, mm -hmm. you know? And so then I started asking around about, well, who might want to buy this book from me? And I was told that a, a gentleman named Jeffrey Steele, you will recognize his name, 
He was the um, dean of architectural booksellers at the time, Bucks County, Bucks County uh, mm -hmm. Pennsylvania. So 18, <laughs> 18 months later, this is a formative experience for me, because I started out with no money and no books. I show up at, at Jeffrey Steele's house, and he has a, a, a gorgeous uh, mansion with, with these uh, columns outside, and, and he walks out to greet me, and he's, uh, he looks like the banker on the Monopoly card. <coughs> Vest, little mustache, you know. Very avuncular, very patrician. He, he treated me very well. And he showed me around his house, and he had these gorgeous tomes, you know. And it was clear he was making a living mm -hmm. selling books out of his home. Mm -hmm. And I thought, wow, this could be for me, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but he was so far away. He was in an orbit completely yeah. divorced from me. Mm -hmm. I was starting to sell comic books, mm -hmm. you know. Anyway, he bought the book um, for $1,000. Mm -hmm. And I said, look. I'm green, I'm really green at this business. And I asked him a question that was impertinent, but I didn't realize it, and I certainly would never ask it now. Mm -hmm. I said, when you sell this book, would you tell me how much you sell it for? Mm -hmm. So two days later, he called up and he said he sold it for $3,000. Mm -hmm. And that was the moment where yeah. I thought, hmm. Uh. He'd made a phone call and $2,000 had magically appeared. Mm -hmm. And I thought, hmm, okay, I'm gonna see what I can do. Mm -hmm. So um, he retired, I don't know, eight, 10 years after that. And I wrote him a letter and uh, I said, you won't remember me, be, but you bought my first book. Wow. And um, it was actually, he wrote back a, a letter that was very touching. And he said, I too remember you. And he said, you wrote a, a nice, you did a nice write-up. Mm -hmm. And um, I asked him if you wouldn't mind telling me, if you sold it to an institution, would you tell me where it is? And he says, it's at Yale. Mm -hmm. So the next chance I'm in um, New Haven with mm -hmm. time on my hands, I'm going to go visit it. Oh, you haven't yet? Not yet. Oh, no, I haven't been incredible. in New, I haven't been in New Haven. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <coughs> oh, yeah. that's awesome. How wonderful when we... And now you see, you get to see that full circle all the time now if we yeah. come to the now and you understand the whole, you know, ecosystem. But how insightful of you, how brave of you, how generous of him. And yeah. now that cycle just keeps repeating, doesn't it? Yeah, and I was, I was teaching, because, you know, I, I finished a PhD and I was uh, teaching writing. I taught journalism and... and um, at the same time, I started to acquire things little by little, and it was a very, very modest um, inventory. And in my first catalog was, was one sheet of paper, front and back, two pages. Um, eventually, because I was located in a backwater, you know, McMinnville, Oregon, has, it's a wonderful place. It's, it's, a, it's a preview of heaven. How did you get to Oregon? My wife. Okay. Uh, uh, was, is in international education. Okay. And there's a college there called Linfield College. Okay. And they have a, a, a very advanced uh, international studies program. Okay. So that got me to McMinnville. But anyway, you don't get a lot of traffic mm -hmm. um, yeah. when it comes to serious collectors or dealers. So I felt like I had to put out a sexy catalog. Yeah. When I had enough inventory, mm -hmm. um, to justify it. Now, I want to tell you the best story, Absolutely. if you don't mind. Oh, we, we're begging for that. Okay, and, and I don't know how much this will cross over with other things you've heard, but it really is wonderful. Um, when I got into business, I looked at the ABAA directory mm -hmm. and where the people were located, and there was this glut of dealers in New York City. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so I said, I'm going to write to all these dealers and say, Ta-da! Mm -hmm. I'm in business, mm -hmm. and we should meet mm -hmm. because maybe we can do something mutually um, effective. Mm -hmm. So I wrote to I think there were something like 71 dealers, okay, and one wrote back. One wrote back. Uh, Ludwig and Dorothy Gottschalk, okay. who uh, ran a place called Biblion mm -hmm. in Forest Hills. They were Holocaust survivors. Yeah. And um, 
I mentioned Steven Spielberg because they did, they did, um, they were interviewed, and you can't watch that interview without, oh, just, without crying. yeah, just, just amazing. Anyway, um, they had been selling books since 1952. They, uh, he went underground like Anne Frank and his family had a, a going concern in Berlin. Um, they hid the books in the Black Forest at several different places. When the war was over, they got the books back together. Um, Dorothy had seen the writing on the wall, her family had, and moved to, of all places, Arkansas. And then eventually they, they teamed up again and got married in, in Forest Hills. It's just, it's really a, a, a great story. And anyway, but they were advanced in age and they didn't want to do catalogs. Um, and they had a remnants of this fantastic collection put together, put together by a guy named Starkenstein who, who uh, was instrumental in developing a, a seasickness uh, medication. Anyway, it was pharmacological. Mm -hmm. I, you know, all I knew was it was antiquarian and, mm -hmm. and they would give it to me on consignment mm -hmm. and my inventory from the beginning was actually pretty good. It was way better than my financial base mm -hmm. sort of um, could possibly acquire. So anyway, I worked with them and gradually I was able to buy some things on my own and things developed slowly over mm -hmm. a period of time. And then, 17 years ago, I met Jay Walker. Oh, yeah. And that name means something to a number of people, especially in the book world. Mm -hmm. And um, I was very curious. I bought a, I bought a, this is a, you'll let me know when we're running out of time. We have all the time in the world. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> anyway, um, the, the, I normally bought, buy and normally bought one book at a time, mm -hmm. but there have been occasions where I bought a collection. The most important collection I ever bought was I bought a Bible collection from a urologist in Snohomish, north That's of Seattle. Place. That's where you would expect to find one, yes. Right. And, and it, was, it was just amazing. It had 40 incunabular Bibles. Wow. Um, mm. And and a whole lot of uh, 17th and 18th century English Bibles. It was just a wonderful collection. Ladies and gentlemen, and, um, we will be opening for the public in at 10 that minutes, moment, 10 until opening you know, day. months after I bought that collection and put it into a catalog, because basically it, it made up a whole catalog. Yeah. Yeah. Jay Walker, the, the, you know, the guy who invented Priceline, was sitting at his desk and decided he wanted to collect rare books. And he said to himself, what kind of book should I collect? And the answer was the bestseller yeah. of all time. So I'm going to collect Bibles. So um, our catalog was online, mm -hmm. and he read it, and he got in touch with us, and he said he wanted this and this and this and this and this and this, and the total was far beyond anything we'd ever received for a complete catalog, mm -hmm. you know. And we said, Jay Walker. This is a joke, uh, you know. Yeah, yeah. And the next day, a check arrived by FedEx, and ever since then, he has—I've uh, been his guy, mm -hmm. you know. He's somebody who likes to have um, someone sort of watch out for him because yeah. he's a genius. His yeah. hair's on fire; uh -huh. sparks come out of his ears because uh -huh. he's inventing things. He has like yeah. 670 patents, you know. Oh um, but he—he he needs guidance because he's working all the time yeah. so he wants to have one person and i think it helps that i have a phd i don't know i don't know maybe yeah. maybe or maybe just that you're you probably more important is that i'm not a shark That's what i'm, I'm in mcminnville oregon mm -hmm. you know and i'm not gonna mm -hmm. i'm not gonna cheat mm -hmm. i got low overhead mm -hmm. you know so anyway it's been a fabulous uh, relationship mm -hmm. um, and he's built this wonderful library which you mm -hmm. probably know if you yeah. don't know it just go to Walker Digital and yeah. take the four-minute tour and mm -hmm. and it's I've been so blessed mm -hmm. so um, he's been a main client but then um, you know we have other clients of, of, of interest as well mm -hmm. and then what's been happening to me personally mm -hmm. is that um, I was able to, despite the fact that I live in a small town in the middle of, of rural Oregon, 
I was able to find people to help me. Mm -hmm. So I have four good employees, four, four top-notch oh, yeah. employees. And so they do the things that I can't do very well anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, my uh, attention span isn't as good, my eyesight isn't as good. Um, they, uh, I can still buy, mm -hmm. and that's what I like to do. Mm -hmm. And so it's right now, and, and for some time now, it's been a very nice relationship. And you know, as long as I can, you know, I'm ambulant and, um, and uh, ambulatory and mm -hmm. sentient, I'm gonna keep going. We like you that way. Yeah. yeah. Bill, do you have an open shop? Anybody wants to come in, um, yeah. have to make an appointment, right. but okay, uh, that's what I mean. but yeah. it's it's a it, commercial premises. Yeah. I worked at home for many years, and then my wife finally said, "Okay, it's time for a divorce or to move the books." <laughs> I hear that often. Yeah. Well, she put up with a lot. So. I hear it. Well, I've heard it in my own life. I know. <laughs> Oh, that was an incredible arc. You brought us from the beginning to the now, and it's, it's, it's really great stuff. I'd like to touch on just a couple things in there. Um, I, I, it sounds like the book business kind of attracted you. It called, it called you. You found it. It found you. The muse sparked in that corner of that back room with that first book. And then as you evolved into the trade, um, you have great staff, and you had some great... Uh, buyers, benefactors, um, how about um, colleagues? Did you find any in Iowa? Did you find any in Oregon or Michigan that were already in the trade? Um, you, you found those wonderful people in, in, in Forest Hill, but uh, who else kind of was your peer at the time or your mentor? That's curious. Um, to, to answer the first thing, mm -hmm. um, when you look at antiques and you look at porcelain, you look at furniture, mm -hmm. you look at books, there's a difference oh, because yeah. books have a, an intellectual dimension yeah. that porcelain and furniture don't have. And that's one of the reasons why I was attracted to books mm -hmm. rather than something else, although I like lots of things that are old and, and well uh, preserved. Mm -hmm. um, I got hooked up early mm -hmm. in my uh, experience with a rich guy from the Netherlands, because mm -hmm. you're talking about colleagues, mm -hmm. and that was pretty much a fiasco oh, really? because he had the money but he was lazy we won't say his name okay uh, he was a nice fellow sure. he was a very nice fellow but he kind of took advantage of me I think you were yeah. trying to collaborate a bit and yeah. put your resources yeah. together you both intellectual and yeah and intuitive and financial yeah, yeah. Um, and, and that was so different from from Dorothy and Ludwig yeah. and, and our relationship there it didn't last terribly long but then we became really good friends mm -hmm. so but I've, I've been more of a, a loner okay. when it comes to um, collegial opportunities um, path. yeah most people most booksellers start out working for somebody yeah. and and I never never did that mm -hmm. um, I'm not a terribly misanthropic guy mm -hmm. but uh, I've just mm, I hate the pressure mm -hmm. of being in a situation where somebody expects something from me that I'm not sure I can deliver. Mm -hmm. So I don't like to take things on consignment as mm -hmm. well as I like to keep them. And the other thing is what? I'm a closet collector, oh okay, boy. you know. Yeah. Um, Another one. I think of myself as a, and this is the healthiest way, mm -hmm. I think of myself as a foster parent. Yeah. You know, I take the books, they're mine, right. until I find a, a good Absolutely. home for them. I'm a guardian as well, I think yeah. of myself. Yeah, that's a good Just word. Just like a protect the leap, right? You never yeah. really own a protect the leap. You take care of it <laughs> for the next generation. Okay. That's what they're, I know. <laughs> A long connection in uh, in Germany let me have a few hours in the Patek Philippe salon, and I, I took that with me. Um, but one thing I should say when you talk about uh, colleagues, yeah. when I first got started, I was still teaching, and so I only um, traveled and bought in the summertime. Okay. So I knew English colleagues actually far uh, sooner than I knew Americans. So people like Christopher Edwards, Christopher de Hamel, mm -hmm. um, wonderful people. Um, so, y yeah, I, I know everybody in the trade, and the oh, okay. wonderful thing about working with Jay Walker mm -hmm. is that, you know, I was, I'd buy a $10,000 book, and that was kind of exciting mm -hmm. yeah. for yeah. me, you sure. know, but suddenly when I was working with Jay, mm -hmm. and 
buying hundred thousand dollar books well then i got to know the really elite dealers uh, around the world and and some of them were uh, interested in me only because I was attached to Jay. Mm -hmm. But some of them were real genuine people mm -hmm. who I've, um, uh, I'm glad I know. Yeah, you mentioned the name we won't name. You mentioned a word that when, it, when you said it, it kind of sparked a, a little bit of a color for me, you, the, a lazy bookseller. Those words just don't go together, do they? No, he, uh -huh. he, was, he was rich, uh -huh. he didn't need the money, mm -hmm. he liked books, so he yeah. thought he'd be a bookseller. They don't go together because there's mm. there's a there's a fire and a curiosity yeah. and an excitement and a zeal that I think you have and we have and it kind of has to be there. Yeah. Or or if this doesn't work out so well, even if you've got great staff, even if you've got Jay, even if you've got great books, it just doesn't work if you don't mm. have that. Yeah, I think that, you're right. A little spark or a big spark. So I'm glad you have it. Um, that spark gets you to book fairs. I imagine uh, more than just Boston. Um, how many years have you guys, do you know, been, been doing this fair or book fairs in general? Well, I'm, we, we always exhibit in Seattle because it's Seattle, yeah. because yeah. it's local. We do New York, yeah. we do California, we do Boston sometimes. Okay. Um, yeah. That's about it. Yeah. It's a good year over it is with this. Yeah. 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 But how many years have you guys been? Oh gosh. Building up those, uh, I've been at it 43 years okay. and exhibiting 35 okay. years. I mean, I I first exhibited at the Detroit oh. Antiquarian Book Fair. That's where I sold comic books. Uh -huh. I think I came. I went home with 180 dollars. <laughs> I was pretty little, little happy about that. Yeah, <laughs> and it's a little different than the Park Avenue Armory, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's a, that's a lot of decades, and uh, you've seen the beginning of the internet start to surge, and I hear that you've built a business based on relationships. That's so key. And uh, But how ha has bringing such visual uh, material, because you specialize, we, maybe people watching don't know, in fine bindings, mm -hmm. in in art bindings and fine press. Uh, maybe you could talk a little bit more about that. And being such a visual medium uh, that you're dealing in, how do the mediums of the internet, Facebook, in Instagram, all of that outreach that you have, how does that change the way you do things? Okay. Besides that big, gorgeous catalog, that glossy, sexy. Uh, when you mention the, the um, internet yeah. platforms or whatever you can see my yeah. eyes okay. glaze over yeah. but that that's why i've got the young that's, right. that's why i got yeah. the younger yeah. staff that's why you have staff yeah <laughs> as far as far as what we deal in yes. you know we we deal in a range of things mm -hmm. you know there's certain things we don't sell not very many children's books not social science you know mm -hmm. but we do deal in a range of things that don't require a great deal of uh intellectual depth I mean, a binding. There it is. It's pretty, isn't it? Yeah. yeah pretty. And and here is a you know illustrated um, uh, limited editions club Joyce. Mm -hmm. There it is. Mm -hmm. You can't miss it. Can't miss um, it. Th the truth is yeah. that that you know if somebody said, why do you, why should we talk to Phil Parages or his staff? Mm -hmm. What can they tell you that some other dealer couldn't tell you just as well? And it would be bindings. We can actually yeah. tell you a lot. Uh -huh. And we have put out catalogs that have been entirely bindings. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, five or six of them could actually have been kept as sort of bibliographical tools. I believe they are. Yeah, yeah. and that makes me very happy. Oh, yeah. yeah. Ladies and gentlemen. Um, but um, book, I'm always, open always uh, open to Here buying in any category, okay. particularly if... I see something that's absolutely spotless. Mm -hmm. Today, for the first time, I couldn't believe it was happening, yeah. but I bought a copy of the memoirs of U.S. Grant. It is the world's most <laughs> common Big book. Yeah. You know, <laughs> why am I buying this book? Well, and the, the answer is it was absolutely mint copy. Okay. And on top of that, around the corner, this is at the Shadow Fair, uh -huh. around the corner, a guy had a prospectus oh, for the, the memoirs Grant. of Grant. And I had never oh, seen that. Now, you may have seen that, uh, but it's, yeah. it's very uncommon, I think. The, 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 uh, the thing that's uncommon is sets and leather. Yeah, yeah. 
Well, the, 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 uh, the prospectus, of course, had the three different bindings, yeah, right. and, and that was in good shape, too. And so this, this spotless thing from, uh, oh, what's her name, Adrian, uh, Austin Rare yeah. Books, who, who, who you know, has the same kind of psychiatric uh, difficulty that I do, you know, which is she has this <laughs> yes. um, fetish with conditions, yes. you know. <laughs> There it was. I was so happy to see it and so happy to buy from her because she's such a sweetheart. You know? She is. Yeah. And she's got that, I see a similar tie-in with um, things that are absolutely impeccably beautiful. Yeah. 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 And that is definitely what you guys have become known for, in, you know. And high levels of craft, you know, there's pretty and then there's... And then there's not beautiful. And then there's absolutely impeccable levels of craft meeting form, meeting it all, and the food. And, and part of that was just a pragmatic strategy. When yeah. I first got started, I, like I said, I had no money and then I had very little money. Mm -hmm. But I thought if I could buy copies that are just sensational, mm -hmm. they will always sell. That is and even if I don't make a, make a big profit, they will always sell. And that's been the case. You know, if somebody once told me, don't buy something you have to apologize for. I agree. Yeah. Yeah, that's... Eh, that's true. We are, well, yeah. you know, you have to make exceptions. You have to be forgiving. Okay. Well, I want to thank you so much for sharing those yes. stories. And uh, there's only one of you. You're one of a kind, and that's why we <laughs> wanted to hear it. Yeah. So thank you again. Well, thanks for letting me talk. I appreciate Absolutely. it.